All right, so we're back for the experiment, exp experimental part of lab 10. Remember, it's rotational dynamics. Also remember, rigid body, rigid body. All right, uh, by the way, I can handle this kind of ride. I hate this kind of ride here. This is nasty stuff. But some of you like that, so go for it. Just don't have like six uh, corn dogs before you get on there. All right, so anyway, this is a uh, picture I found from Shutterstock, and it, it shows you a little bit better uh, what the setup looks like. So what we have here, we have a pulley, and the pulley is very low mass, so we don't have to worry about the pulley's moment of inertia. We're gonna ignore it. But just remember, it does have a moment of inertia. It's just really, really low. So this is called a modified Atwood machine. So this rope right here, string, is wrapped around the axis that's gonna rotate this, um, this tube with these two masses on there. And this is gonna provide the force, which translates over here, and then produces a torque, which is gonna spin that thing. Well, this is what the actual setup looks like. So there's your weight hanging down. The string comes over here, you put it on the, on the medium sized pulley. There's three different radii. So you go with the middle radius. And when you do the experiment, um, you have to tell it to go for the medium pulley because it defaults to the big pulley. You can't use the big pulley. All right, and then when you move, you're gonna be moving these masses and you gotta move them together. It balances everything out so uh, it doesn't go crazy on you. Okay, so you move them into the same spot and then you measure R just to the center, the axis of rotation out to the center of the mass. And you gotta mass, and you gotta mass all these things up and I'll show them to you in one second. This is a rotary motion sensor right here. So as this falls, it'll turn the pulley and then we'll be able to determine the acceleration of the torque that's rotating this thing. So you see as this falls, there's tension right here that's pulling at the radius of this post right here and making it rotate. All right, let me go to the next slide. So I got the forces applied here. So this is object number one, and this is just straight linear motion. So that's F net equals MA. All right, so up here you see, we got F net, we got the weight hanging down, so the earth is pulling on the weight right there. And then we got the tension that's pulling up due to object number two over here. So W minus T21 causes M1 to accelerate at A. Okay, now over here, the same tension, remember forces always come in equal and opposite pairs. So this tension is pulling on this, this, um, this post right here at a distance R from the center. Now, I drew the R over here just so you could see it. Remember, R is a, radi uh, a radius vector. But anyway, in that picture right there, R would be coming right out of the board, okay? And then you would curl it into the tension and the torque would be down like that, okay? So it's gonna make the whole thing rotate like this. You see, like that. So your fingers actually show you the direction of rotation. Okay, so you take those two equations, by the way, the angle between R, R is coming right out in your face, T is to the left, and that is 90 degrees. So we got T, one, two, so number one is pulling on number two, R, sine 90 degrees, and that's equal to I alpha. But we can change alpha over to the regular acceleration by again, like I said before, you take the acceleration big A divided by R is alpha. So then we can connect this A with this A and solve for it, okay? Uh, solve for I. So I'm gonna solve for I. I'm gonna take these two equations and solve for I. Now remember, these two T's are the same. One is just opposite the other. And when you solve for it, this is the equation you're gonna get. So you're gonna measure the acceleration and then have to do a calculated column to get your moment of inertia. So the goal is to measure the moment of inertia by doing this modified Atwood machine 
trick. Okay, so that's it. I'm just gonna leave that on because I like that. Okay, so let's go over here and we'll show you the setup. So here's the pulley right here and I've got string wrapped around the pulley. So you see if I pull on the string, you see how it, how it unloads like that. And you can see it going faster and faster. What's cool about this experiment, all you have to do is just rotate it backwards and get everything set up again. And by the way, you don't need a lot of data when you're doing it. What's nice about this guy though, is you can set it for 50 measurements a second. That's fantastic. So you don't really need much measurements at all. Uh, many measurements at all. Uh, I mean, uh, many, you don't have to let it travel very far. Now here's the weight right here. 50 grams is a good value. Okay, 50 grams. You can use 35. Remember, this is five right here. Don't go any lower than 35. This is 55. So I'm gonna do 55 for you. And you can see I got the two masses out at the end. So you'd measure this distance right here from the axis of rotation to the center of the mass. And remember, you gotta mass all these things up. I will have the digital balance so you get really nice, uh, nice values here. You also need to measure the length of the, the rod that this thing's sitting on. It's actually a tube. If you look on the end there, you can see right in the opening there. It's a tube, it's not a rod, okay? All right, that looks good. So let's just go ahead and set up the rotary motion sensor. So you plug it in. By the way, remember all these things are keyed. So when you plug it in, make sure you're plugging it in correctly. Otherwise you ruin the pins uh, that are in the plug. All right, so here it is right there, you can see that. So you go down here to the cog, and then you go, I wanna use the medium pulley right there. Okay, and it knows what the size of that is. So you don't have to do anything else. And it says here you can zero the measurements at start. Well, it's no big deal. And you can change the sign if you want. So if you're getting negative numbers and you don't like them, then just go over here and just click that thing. I don't know what it is right now. I haven't run it yet. Um, but anyway, if you don't like negative numbers, then forget it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure the speed uh, versus time and then get the slope of the line, which is acceleration. So I'm gonna say okay, bing, right there. And I'm gonna close that up. And then I'm gonna go over here and get a graph. All right, and over here, you just select that you want the velocity. Okay, so I got velocity versus time, and I'm gonna pick a linear fit right here. Now, it's really good if you let it fall, and but you push record first, and then let it fall, because it'll be nice and straight, and then all of a sudden, it'll show up. Actually, wait. Actually, I'd want to let go of it. Yeah, I, I forget. Yeah, yeah, it'd probably be better just to let it go first. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So let me get over here, so back up a little bit there. So I'm gonna put the mass right on here. But you can always put a bubble box around your data and uh, that will just look at yeah, that's the good data. And I'm also gonna change my frequency to 20 hertz. So I wanna take, I mean 50. I wanna take 50 measurements a second. Okay, so I'm gonna let go of it, and then I'm gonna push record. Oh, that's nice. Okay, and then look how beautiful that is. All right, and then I'm just gonna stop it. Ooh, I should have, um, I should have stopped this first. But you see, I got a negative slope. So if you don't like negatives, you go back up here and you go over to the cog and change it to the other sign. We'll do one more, okay? And I'll do it right this time, I promise. Okay, so we're at 50, see 50 hertz right there? Okay, and just wind this thing back up. This is very cool stuff. These are great labs. All right, good. Now, remember, I'm going to let it get started, then I'm gonna push collect. Okay, so there we go. And then I'm just gonna turn it off right there and then stop it. Perfect. All right, let me close this up. And let me get this mass off here. Okay, so there's your line right there. And you can see the slope is 0 0.0228 meters per second squared. You can see how slow it was going. All right, and if you want more SIGIs, remember, anytime you want more SIGIs, you have to go curve fit properties, and then you go to numerical format, 
and then go, you want the numbers for the coefficients, and let's see, I'll put in, I'm, I'll put in four, just uh, give you one more. So you can see it's got one more digit right there. Okay, now you can pick too many digits, but you can see that is one straight line. So you just need the slope. You don't need the y-intercept. No y-intercept. Okay, and that's how you do it. Now, uh, if you didn't get the data like that, uh, just practice it. It'll just take you two minutes, and you'll get it all worked out. Who's ever doing the computer, who's ever letting go of the mass, uh, you can do that like that. Okay, so these are going to move in, and then when you get it down to like here, so remember, you've got to keep these nuts up high. You get in as close as you can. Now watch what happens here. This is crazy. I'll do this one really quick. Oop, wrong side. It's like a yo-yo. All right, that's good. One more, more. Now this is tough. Okay, now remember, it's still the same two objects on a, on a tube. But the mass is now very close to the axis of rotation. All right, so I might have to go ahead and push collect first, as you can see what's going to happen. All right, here we go. Oh, I did a good job. Oh, did you see that? Okay. Oh, I turned it off. Okay, stop. All right, until so I use a bubble box, just so you can see it. So there's a bubble box. So whenever you get data that is uh, not good, then, like, this is all cr cruddy data right here. This is where I stopped it. And you can see there's this slope right there, 0.241 um, meters per second squared. The slope on a V by T graph is acceleration. You can see that thing's got a slight little curve on there. Can you see that? All right, so that's that. Now let me just show you one more thing you're gonna do. So you're gonna take this off to do the second experiment. This time you're gonna make it rotate around a point that's not the center of mass. See, this was the center of mass right here. So if I balance it, you see it balances right there. That's the center of mass. This time, you're going to use this guy, and you're going to, you can do uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight measurements, and it's like way out here. So we're not, the center mass is at the very center, and this guy is off to the side like that. All right, and we're going to rotate this guy back to where he was, and I'm just going to let go of it. You still take the data the exact same way. Okay, but this is seeing what happens to the moment of inertia if you rotate the object around a different axis that doesn't go through the center mass. Okay, watch this. All right, and you can also do the center one. You normally, you know, oh, we, um, when you have it at the center, um, it'll rotate, you know like it was center of mass right there. But anyway, that's, that, by the way, that wasn't the center. The center's right here. See, I had two holes drilled in it so I could get eight measurements. The company only put seven holes because um, uh, I don't know what the deal is. But anyway, I put one at about a half a center. So here's right at the center. You see how nicely it spins? Because that's the center of mass. Okay. So that's it, that is experiment number 10. And my son and I have finished doing all the videos for the whole course. We had to get that number 10 done, and we did today. All right, so peace be with you. May the Lord be with you and guide you, keep you safe and healthy, and we'll see you next time. Bye.